I am truly hoping for no gremlins on this live. Especially after last weekend shenanigans. <clears throat> can anyone hear me? I can. I know you can. <clears throat> You're in the same room as me. Of course you can hear me. You can't miss me. Quite a few watchers already. Hi, Sherry. As you can see, I've got my city shelf out. I think this is the first time this one's been on a live. Um, it's just not happened to come in. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Hello, Sandy. Uh, I'm good, thanks. Are you well? Looking forward to Christmas? I'm not really in the mood for it, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm sure I'll feel differently on December 25th when I'm chucking dinner around and being generally busy. Yeah, I'm all right, thanks, Sharon. I have, uh, or I will have more stitchy time because overtime has ended at work. It's always a blessing, isn't it? <laughs> we like the overtime, we like the extra money, but we also, you know, when I say, when I say we, I'm using the royal we here. Mm -hmm. We don't like the fact that it takes up our stitchy time. Uh, yeah, we just keep on keeping on. Hello, Christine. How are you? Sandy, I'm a bar humbug here. Yep. <laughs> uh, I feel a bit bar humbug this year. Uh, hi, Sarah. Congratulations on your finish. I've seen that Master is done. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, Mrs. Miggins and Daphne Chamberlain, hello. And Betsy, hello, Betsy. <clears throat> and Tina Tries Life. Oh, Andy, you'll like this one. Will I? Yeah. Hi, Nicola and Andy. Many thanks for the quick turnaround on the chart of my wedding photo. I've put in the first few threads already. Woohoo! Cool. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad it's, it's what you envisaged. But as we've said before, with full coverage, trust the colours. <laughs> Speaking of colours, how gloriously colourful is this one? This is regular size max colour uh, stitching shelf. And uh, obviously you, you will probably see it on other videos. I'm doing it 25 count, one over one full cross. Um, and I just, I just love the colours in this one. I think they just look amazing. Very bright in the uh, on the top shelf. Eunice, hello. Ah, finally got to catch me live. Yep, yeah, I am here every Sunday, apart from next week when I'll be here on the Saturday. No, I won't. I'll still be here on the Sunday next week, Christmas Eve. New Year week, I'll be here on the Saturday and then back on Sundays at a new and earlier start time of 7.30. <clears throat> Do check out my community tab, if at all in any doubt. Um, but, yeah, we are just sort of moving around with the times a little bit um, for live streams in the new year. But welcome. It's lovely to have you join us. So what have we all been up to? What, and are we busy stitching on anything? Well, today I uh, have hosted lunch for my stepdad and uh, we just had a simple dinner today because we're all having, obviously, roast in just over a week's time, being Christmas Day. 
So we just had sausages and mashed potato and some vegetables, and it was very nice. Although I had chicken um, because the diet tells me that sausages aren't very good. All the added cereal and things that they have in them to bulk them out. Um, so I just have um, some chicken with some boiled potatoes and vegetables. It was nice. I enjoyed it. Um, if you missed my way in last week, uh, three stone, seven and a half pounds. Or if you work just in pounds, 49 and a half pounds. Uh, and I'm very pleased. Uh, I am more than my Christmas goal. Ooh, sorry, my frame keeps slipping because it's just a bit of how it's held. So do bear with me if it moves. If I if I do say some funny language, <laughs> we'll let you off. Yeah. I don't really want to be saying funny language though because it uh, demonetizes the video. Um, yeah, so um, all my Christmas shopping is done. We finished that last week. Well, I so said last week, we finished it on Wednesday and it's all been packed and ready to go to its recipients. Some of it's uh, already gone. Some of it's already gone. Yeah, they are <clears throat> packed. They are stacked up on the top bunk in Hannah's room because Hannah has a bunk bed. Um, and um, yesterday we went to visit with Andy's parents and catch up with them and it was lovely went and had a nice lunch I still stayed on my plan so yeah I keep going I will plan to treat myself at Christmas though I have already said this I am not going without Christmas dinner some cheese and crackers at some point you know, and some of the nice stuff that Christmas always brings. So, but I won't go mad. Yeah, no, I'll, but I will just make sure that I do enjoy it. Stocking Deer Creek Gunner Gal Singer. Ah, 23%. Oh, well, you're doing well on that one, uh, Sandy. Nearly 24% there. Hi, Missy. Knitting on a fair hour cardigan by Marie Wallin, true Shetland pattern and wool. Oh, fantastic. Sounds lovely. Uh, I've got to get my knitting needles out because Lauren wants an adipose. I think we talked about that though last week. Um, she's a big Doctor Who fan. Hi, Norma. And Norma says hello to you too. Hello. I started my son's piece on his birthday 15th, the same as Hannah's. It's See No Evil by Charting Creations. That sounds great, Mrs. Miggins. And, you know, what a finer day to have a new start on my kid's birthday, which you thoroughly enjoyed, by the way. And thanks, everybody, for your um, lovely wishes to her both because of her birthday and her new job. She was uh, She was delighted. Your weight loss is amazing. Well done. Thank you, Sharon. Betsy stitching Newcastle bouquet by Teresa Cogut. I don't think I've seen that one. I might have to have a look at that after. Okay. Uh, Rose, hello. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Sandy, well done on your weight loss. Thank you. I'm still going. I, we're, we're, Andy and I were having a chat about it earlier. Um, and I think I now know what my long-term goal is. And if I lose the weight as planned, all being well, I will be there sometime between May and July. But, you know, it's my year on the plan in August. So if it takes me a year, I'm not be unhappy about that. But hey, let's see how far we can get. Daphne stitching on Song of Summer, charted by Hayde Artworks, Donna Gelsinger. Lovely. Donna Gelsingers are very popular, aren't they? Hello, Clara. Hope you're doing well. Is it still cold over there? 
Do you remember last week that you and Jody were saying it was a little bit cold? Where, where are they again? Texas. Oh. <clears throat> and Andy is obviously is here because you've just heard him uh, chip in. I did. <laughs> you know me, if I'm here, I will chip in. Unless I'm really, 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 really busy. <laughs> but I'm not tonight, so it's okay. Yeah, it's good. Uh, winding down, ready for your festive uh, break, aren't you, love? Yeah, maybe we were. You've done so well on your diet that you need to treat yourself at Christmas. Absolutely agree, Norma, and I shall be doing so. It's just a case of finding that balance, isn't it? And not going too bananas when I treat myself. <laughs> Because, I mean, I think for me, I mean, I was a bit of a compulsive overeater and there is still a compulsion in me to overeat. So I do need to be a little bit careful. I mean, I've just I've been sat here this evening saying to Andy at intervals, <clears throat> I could just eat something that's really nice, but really, really bad for my diet. <laughs> but then you would wreck everything you got. Exactly. So that's a good idea. Yep, I don't want to undo the work I've already put in. Maria, hello, how are you? Happy Sunday. It's a shame, though, that it's Monday tomorrow. Boy, they come around all too quick, don't they? Eh? No sooner is it Friday evening than it's Monday morning. I don't think we have actually a weekend in between. It doesn't feel like it, does it? Yeah. But it doesn't feel like it because it goes so quick. That's what I'm saying. Clara stitching full moon by contemporary cross stitch. Lovely. And Eunice stitching on Rooster Farm, charted by Habe, artwork by Donna Gelsinger. She's getting popular, this lady, this Donna Gelsinger, isn't she? There's a few people stitching them on the floss tube. Clara, doing well. It was cold this morning, but the sun is out and it's very nice. Great. We've had a couple of days here, certainly this last week, where it felt like it didn't get light all day. Um, it, you know, it just felt very dark and overcast. I, I was working in the office and, I mean, it's a bit soul-destroying at the moment anyway, going into office because I'm going in when it's dark and I'm coming home when it's dark. Um, so I don't feel like I actually get to see any of the daytime anyway. But, you know, when I'm sort of looked out a window at lunchtime or whatever, it just doesn't seem to be getting light at all at the moment during the day. But uh, this week we will have the shortest day. So things should improve. In the, you know, after this week, shouldn't they? All being well. In theory. Yeah, in theory, indeed. <clears throat> Hi, Sharon. How are you? Um, I saw your comment earlier. Um, I've adjusted my settings, so you can you should be able to add me now. Um, my friend request settings were set for friends of friends um but i've now set it for anybody so yeah you can pop through and add me shame you've had to to make yourself a new account um it's a bit of a pain okay sunny days hello yeah. Hi, Nicola and Andy. Today I'm working on Hey Mini Deer Creek, also by Donna Gelsinger. Yeah, there you go. See, popular. <laughs> okay. Tina, how many of us are doing the new Hey Stitch Long? Yeah, I'm not going to do because of no new starts. You're quite right. Um, but yeah, if there's any of you are doing the Heaven and Earth Design Stitch Along, let Tina know. Um, 
I think, was there about eight charts or something like that? I, I did look at it briefly, but of course, because I'm not doing new starts, I'm not looking in any way seriously. <laughs> I think there was about eight charts that I saw. Ah, uh, Sharon, you're welcome. And um, it's a bit of a pain when you're trying to get things back, isn't it? But uh, fingers crossed she'll get there. Okay, so Daphne, you're doing the hay 2024 with the cat. Clara, did everyone get the free, free Christmas chart? I've looked at it. Um, I might download it for a new start, not next year. Uh, I thought it was very nice, uh, very cute, but quite a large chart, isn't it? Uh, Got it open actually. Yeah, uh, seven hundred by six nine eight, so almost a perfect square. But yeah, I I thought it was quite beautiful, so I might download it ready for when I am no longer embargoed. <laughs> Uh, Sharon, not keen on the designs. That's fair enough. I think I, I, I saw a comment about the designs saying that most of them had like mushrooms or toadstools in it. So if you weren't into mushrooms or toadstools or didn't sort of really like them, then you were kind of out of most of the charts anyway. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't really look at the charts in that much detail. Um, I, I saw that there was kind of a, a variety of charts of like nature but I didn't really look in all too great a depth because like I said <laughs> I'm embargoed I'm on the head sal going to do this do that silly bird can't remember her name ah so that's for you and Clara silly bird yep silly bird don't fill me in I'd have to go and have a look at it, so. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. Ooh. Uh, Christine's picked the rainbow dragon. Tina tries life has picked the frog and the ladybird. Cool. I wonder why sometimes my name shows the sunny days or MVC. <laughs> I have a very unique name. I don't know. Maybe it's just YouTube being a, a, a bit of a pain in the neck. I rarely join Sal's an introverted stitcher and not a join. You're joining on this, Sharon. Joining on our live stream. Karen, hello. Hi, Nicola. Just popping in to say hi and wish you a Merry Christmas. And to you, Karen, and yours. And uh, thank you very much indeed for your wonderful support this year. You truly have been a wonderful friend. Tina, there are several designs that are quite similar, a few different crops from the same larger design. I don't know why it's buffering on my laptop. Mm. Anna Karen, I'm not joining the sal, but if I was, I would pick Bernadette. It's just that I want to do the whole picture and not the crop version. I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> Hi, Heather. How are you? Hope you're doing okay. 
Just mark those off. Otherwise, I will get myself in a knot. You're throttling at? Just something I saw on Facebook. All right, okay. Oh, good. I'm uh, I'm glad. What are you working on? Anything exciting, Heather? Share with us. We're all nosy. Are we? Yeah, I'm very nosy. I wouldn't say I'm nosy. Yeah, but you're not. You're not. You know, necessarily a stitcher. You're sort of in here as a mod, aren't you? Well, a kind of a mod. I'm not really a mod. That's her name, Bernadette. Bernadette. <laughs> so the cute bird looks like lots of confetti. I don't mind confetti. Um, if I've got another project I can switch and rotate with, confetti is fine by me. Can be a bit time consuming. Why aren't you going down in this hole? Thank you. That sounded really bad. Maybe I should have said, why aren't you going through the fabric? Okay, Heather's working on coffee by Gecko Rouge. Ah. Are you going to be joining me on uh, in 2025 with a year of the gecko hashtag? If you're still working on it, you might have finished it by then. Gecko Rouge seems really popular. It is really popular. No, I mean, you know, more than it ever has been. It's it's just mm. every every time you talk about like uh, what you're stitching and whatnot, most people are working on something that's. You, you, you see a lot of heavy nerf designs, chart and creations, pain free crafts, gecko roost, cross stitch studio. Yeah. Cross stitch for everyone. There's, there's a few sort of big chart companies, but gecko are unique because they do theirs only in kit form. <clears throat> Those kits are something special. I love them. We know. <laughs> You've got plenty of them. Yes, your wallet dislikes them now, though, doesn't it, dear? Yes, and everybody seems to be on your side when it comes to me laying a bet about you actually getting your next one. Oh, yeah, everybody's on my side. No one, no, no one seems to... Everyone seems to have faith in you, and, you know... Oh, the Christmas freebie from Heaven and Earth Designs has been removed. It's a good job I've got it on the computer, then. <laughs> I did open it. Um, to have a look, uh, mm -hmm. I'll get your opinion on it, and if you like it, then I'll keep it. If not, then I won't. It must have been very popular then, Eunice, I would think. I have so many geckos, I haven't even started yet, so maybe yet. So, uh, obviously, next week is Christmas week, but I'll still be putting out my floss tube as usual, and I'll still be doing Stitch With Me's as usual. And at some point, I will do an end-of-year whip parade, probably after my floss tube next week. Whips, and I'll show my Gecko Rouge kits as well that I've had this year. <laughs> Sharon says, we'll have to set up a GoFundMe page for Andy to support you. Andy needs a GoFundMe page for himself. Mm. GoFundMe just to support your wallet. <laughs> I like Sue's idea. Start collecting bottle tops and <laughs> stuff. Brilliant. Oh 
Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Hmm. Clara, me too. I've just received the ho ho ho, but didn't open it yet. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what the ho 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 <laughs> was. <laughs> Sharon says, join the club. Right. The other Sharon, because there's two Sharons. Two Sharons? Yeah. How is this possible? Oh, Andy put out the video today on his channel where we go and visit with Matilda. Lamley. Uh, yeah. Lamley. So if you wanted to see the full video with Matilda and, and why I did the post box topper. Uh, it's out on Andy's channel now. It's called the, the village is called Lamley. And in fact, if I ask Andy very nicely, hang on, I know what you're going to ask me. <laughs> just give me a second. I don't mind doing it. Just uh, I need a new YouTube tab here because otherwise I'm not going to lose that. It'll take me a couple of minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, per Michelle, Christmas freebie has been removed. I checked it on the A1 detector page. It came back at 2.4%, but someone else checked it was 76%, so now permanently deleted. I'm not sure what that means. I'll be honest. But if she's chosen to take it down, then that's entirely her decision, isn't it, as a site owner? Uh, I've ordered the Ho 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 previous years, but not this time. Love the artist, though. <clears throat> yeah, I've had a look at her artwork as two, uh, uh, two Heather, so, you know, my, my wish list gets ever longer. Oh, thank you, Linda. Yeah, Linda's been enjoying your channel. Hi, Linda, how are you? And Andy will be chuffed that you're enjoying his channel. He is. Christmas Eve. Is it Christmas Eve that you put out your end of year video thing? Your montage? Uh, yes, look, it is. Yeah. yeah, right. Christmas Eve, Andy will be putting out a video and it will be, what, about an hour long? What? How long was the video? What, the Christmas special? Yeah. It's, it's about half an hour. It rounds up everywhere I've been. Yeah, about half an hour long and it rounds up everywhere that Andy's been. So, uh, I've put the link in the thing now in the chat. Maybe. Ah. Ah. Ah, right. AI art. Oh, I see. So, artificial intelligence. So, right. Okay. Yes, I've seen some of that stuff that uh, AI can do. Right. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't get it. I just see a chart that's nice, and if I like it, I like it, and, you know. Uh, Presumably, then, there's a difference between AI and digital. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure of the difference myself, but it's it's basically, if you, if you use AI, it, 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 it sort of generates something based on what you ask it. Oh, right, okay. Um, so... Like for example, if I if I asked it to, if I asked it for a, for a, for a Christmas tree, it would generate a Christmas tree. Right. I can ask it for something like really weird. Like I could I could maybe ask it for like, can I have a Christmas tree sticking out of a car? <laughs> and it, oh, and, and I it would, see. And it would come up with it. So it's a bit like chatbot for. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Like a chat box it's, for images. I don't understand how it works, but that's exactly oh. what it is. Basically, it takes whatever you put in it and it runs with so it. So it's a program that just extrapolates your request and generates an image based on it? Yeah. Right, gotcha. Yeah, I don't fully understand it, but that's what that's what AI can do. It's, ah. it's, 
How do you know what is AI? Good question. Me? Sharon asks, how do you know what is AI? You, oh. Can you tell? Uh, I guess you can, but I don't really know how. I, I would imagine then from what you've just said, the first thing is, is that the image would have to make sense. Because you wouldn't want a Christmas tree sticking out of a car. Well, that's just the easiest thing I could really think of. Ah, uh, AI also pinches artists' work and amends it. Oh, that makes sense. It was still a pretty chart, though, even if it was AI. I think AI can do some some pretty cool things, but I don't know. It depends if you want realism or not. I think. Ah, right. Okay, so there are lawsuits going on due to artists and copyrights, and Clara says it has famous art installed in it, so it copies from other artists' work. Right. Nice. So it'll definitely won't be a unique image then. No, which is why. Right. In that case, then, if that image is in a copyright infringement, I shall probably be getting rid of it. Hi, Mandy. So no new starts in 2024. Could you start wherever you like this week? Well, I could, theoretically. Uh, but in practice, I don't think I could fit any more in. Um, because I've got 10 on the go at the moment, and 10 for me is is quite a lot. I was going to say, for some people, 10 is like small for them. Oh, yeah, I understand that, but for me, it's quite a lot. So I could, and, you know, like we said, I could just put one X in each piece and it would be started, wouldn't it? But, no, I, I don't have any plans to do a new start this week. But I could. <laughs> if you do, you lose the bet with me. I, well, no, I don't because it's not 2024. I said no new starts in 2024. And when I last looked at the calendar, it still said 2023. That was me trying to get out of it there, wasn't it? Yep. I tried. Come on, you got, you got to give me a bit of, <laughs> bit of credit. I tried. Yeah, I give you props for trying. Might not have worked, but, you know. Christmas. This free hay chart has some mistakes. One of the horses only has three legs. Oh, blimey. Let me have a look. <laughs> I've still got it open. Yeah. Santa has three legs. Yeah. <laughs> a horse and the, ho three the horse in the background has two butts and then lighted candles in the carriage yeah it's 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 not not the best uh chart there is it yes the, the driver has got three legs Yeah, horse in the background's got two butts. Yeah, I can see that now. Oh dear. What are we talking about here? I'll show you in a bit. Darling Bluebell has a floss tube explaining a lot about AI. She works with AI but doesn't support it for cross stitch. Right. I've got Darling Bluebell on my list, I think. Um I will go and have a look at that. I've I've about ten two, no more till one is done. <laughs> Mandy, exactly, yeah. One, so, yeah, one cross, and it's considered a start. But, no, nope, Andy's not getting out of his bet, is he? Not at the minute. There's time yet, a lot of time. Claire, that's not so I'm going to wait to, uh, wait to look. It's a good, yeah. I, I've had to have a quick look as well there, Sharon. Hang on. I'll show you after Frost Tube, after Live under. Oh. I'm 
Ah. Think I'll be deleting that chart. Yeah. Yeah, probably is why she's took it down, Mrs. Miggins. You're quite right. So, yeah, if uh, I mean, it's certainly not up to standard, is it? If we've got sort of bits added where they don't need to be added and bits removed where they don't need to be removed. And it and it doesn't make sense when you look at it. You're quite right, uh, Clara, there with the candles inside the actual carriage windows. That doesn't make sense. I wonder if anybody started it. Uh, I don't know, Sharon, but if it is, I'll uh, copy image and send it you into a Facebook inbox. Not the pattern, just the image. Um, and show you, because, you know, Clara's bob on, it's awful. <laughs> when you look at it that closely, it's really bad. But yeah, Michelle's took it down off the website. So how much are we all going to stitch over Christmas? Um, I'm not sure if I'll get much done next weekend because we'll be doing lots of prep here. But then uh, Christmas Day after lunch is done and everybody's happy. Oh, it's stitch o'clock. And Boxing Day as well because I'm back at work on the Wednesday, so... I'm able to work from home on Christmas week all week, so I don't have to trudge into the office, which will be a good thing. Yeah, you would, Sharon. You would be gutted if you'd started and then, you know, realised about the mistakes. I'm uh, in full agreement there. But these things happen, don't they? And at least it's been realised early, uh, only after like a, what, a couple of days of releasing it. <clears throat> Not after like, you know, millions of people have started it in six months' time kind of thing. It's, uh, at least it's been realised now. It's also very quiet. Yeah. I'm going to have a drink in a sec because I'm getting dry. Aye, so quiet, bro. <laughs> because people are stitching along. But the chatter is basically what they come for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. My sister's taking a really hammering this month with Christmas prep, yeah. Mine's not been too bad with Christmas prep. It's been overtime and travelling. Um, because I keep it, you know, relatively simple at Christmas. Um, I've, I obviously left my shopping a little bit later than I would have liked. Um, but like my food shop, I start to get, you know, dry stores uh, cupboard staples from sort of November time 
Um, so I've really only got fresh to get this week. Um, I'll definitely try not to go out on the weekend. I'm having my hair cut um, on Saturday again. Because it's been about six weeks or so since it was done. And we're ready for a tidy up. Sharon isn't stitching Andy. She is drinking wine and eating wine gums. Oh, right. <laughs> Plan. Not wrong with a bit of, uh, bit of wine and a few wine gums. Nope. Oh, I like wine gums. Been a long time since I had wine gums. I just like those sports mixture because they were like a little bit harder than a wine gum. It used to last ages. And midget gems. Love midget gems. Uh, what have I done here? I don't know. What have you done here? I don't know. Oh dear. Hang on. Uh, oh, Missy, that's, that's <laughs> Missy loves to hear me and you chatting while she's knitting. Knitting? Yeah, because she's knitting tonight. Yeah. And Sharon loves uh, okay. sports mixtures, stroke wine, go uh, midget gems. Oh dear. Yeah, there's a lot of, especially here in the UK, we've had a lot of sweets and chocolate from my childhood stroke younger years have disappeared or they've been renamed or they've been renamed yeah like for example snickers yep which used to be called marathon certainly did I used to like, you know, lots of things when I was a kid that are now no longer about. Did you know they'd stopped making Tutti Fruities? Have they? Yep. Why is that? No longer the demand for them, apparently. Yeah. Apparently they stopped making them. Mm, fair enough. Didn't really eat them anymore. Yeah. Cadbury Dream Bar, it was like a white twirl. Like a white chocolate twirl. They were lovely. I don't think your American viewers will know some of these. Probably not, but I would imagine in the same in the USA that sweets that they, and chocolate that they've seen, you know, 20 years ago is all but disappearing off the shelves as manufacturers put in new lines and stuff. I saw an interesting programme yeah. on um, YouTube... And it was about it was the, speaking of for for our, for our American friends, it was about the Twinkies factory because at one point Twinkies production stopped because they went bust. Um, and uh, when they said they we're not making any more, everybody literally went out to the shops and bought up all of the Twinkies. And of course, you know, now they brought them back because we see them over here in American uh, sweet shops and things. I don't think I've ever had a Twinkie. Is that one in Meadow or gone? I don't know. Skittles are a bit like Tutti Frutis. Yeah, bang on, Sharon, but, you know, Tutti Frutis were a bit bigger, weren't they? <laughs> Caramac's going as well. Yeah, but... Um, Cadbury's have brought out, uh, what's it called? Is it the caramel bar? Is it the caramel that um, we were getting? I, I that we got for Dennis? I, uh, I honestly can't remember what it is. I'll be honest with you. The caramel bar's all right, but it's it's not like um, a caramel. I used to love having a caramel because... My aunt, I used to come and visit my auntie when I was little. My mum always used to take me into the shop and buy me a caramac. Alice, not seen Tutti Frutti for you? No, because I think they've, uh, I think they've gone, Alice. I 
can remember having a. I'm pretty sure I can remember having an Easter egg as a kid that was made out of caramel chocolate. I could be wrong. I could have dreamt it, you know. But I love caramel. Yeah, because caramel was round trees, and caramel is Cadbury's. Yeah, sounds right. My stepdad loves caramel, and he's got an iron deficiency, so he's allowed to have you know more chocolate than the average bear, especially dark chocolate. But he kind of just sticks to caramel because he loves it. Some of those sweets, well, they hold such great childhood memories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Golden cups. Oh, yeah. Golden cups. Yeah, they were like a chocolate cup. Oh, golden cups. I'm not familiar with that one. Like a chocolate cup. What is a Twinkie? I've only ever heard of them in Greece. Um, they're like a, a sponge bar with a filling inside. But I think that they had different fillings, or the, you know, they had like you know other editions of them. I don't think we had them over here, did we? We'd you'd get them in the American sweet shops because I've seen them. Yeah. Um, but they're they're like a, and and they were like a long life sponge. Um, I think they have something like a, a good shelf life, something like sixty five days or something, if I remember rightly, from that documentary that I saw about them. Yeah, Norma says that the Twinkies were delicious. And they used to have like a cupcake as well, Norma, with like five swirls of white icing on the top. There was a name for them as well. Can't remember what it is. My memory of Twinkies is the film Ghostbusters, where he talks about the, the, the paranormal activity in New York. And let's say this Twinkie represents the normal amount of paranormal activity. And then he says how big the Twinkie would be based on the morning reading or something. Twinkies are so good. I don't think I've had one since I was a kid. Were they, were they rather, are they rather sweet? But of course, I mean, in America, I mean, here in the UK, our main chocolate manufacturer is Cadbury's. But in America, it, is it, it's like, there's like Hershey's, Reese's, Ghirardelli's, and something else I, I can't remember the name of, or Ghirardelli. Is it Ghirardelli? So yeah, educators about your American chocolates. <laughs> I'm sure there's nothing wrong with American chocolate, but I much, I much prefer the British version. I think American chocolate is not as sweet as English chocolate, but I think American cakes and cupcakes and things are very sweet, if I remember rightly. I like Hershey's. That's American, isn't it? Yeah. Hershey's Kisses. Yes, chocolate hostess cupcakes were great with the cream filling in the middle and chocolate topping. That's it, yeah. And the five swirly loop thing on the top. I've seen, I'm pretty sure I've seen those in our American sweet shops here, over here as well. And uh, is it A&W &A root beer? That's very popular in America. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I like I root beer. I'll take your word for that. We used to have root beer here in the UK in McDonald's. Because McDonald's always had root beer at one point, but they, they took it off. So sometime in the 90s, but I love McDonald's root beer. Did you ever have root beer? Can't say I did. Can't say I did. Oh, no, they weren't that sweet. Oh, I'm getting myself confused, uh, Clara. But yeah, <coughs> root beer uh, in McDonald's. And, and speaking of McDonald's, they used to do things like the Mac rib. I love the Mac rib. You remember having to go to that 
Cancel at McDonald's because they had Matt, Matt Ribs yeah, that time. I do, yeah. Yeah, we don't get them Matt Ribs very often here. They bring it back occasionally. Mm. Yes, that root beer with their hamburgers, yeah. I can remember the first time I ever went into a McDonald's. I went in with my mum. It opened in Rotherham, where I live, in 1984, I want to say, 1985, something like that. And my mum took me in and she got me a hamburger and and fries and a root beer. And I'd never had root beer before. I mean, to be fair, I hadn't sort of had much in the way of, you know, takeaway food because, you know, we didn't really do that in our family. We didn't really do takeaway food. Well, it wasn't you know, really a thing in general, was no. it? No. Um, and I can remember her buying me this root beer and, and loving it. I thought the white filling was a little sweet, but not the yellow sponge. Ah, Sandy, yeah, you see, you're a fellow Matt Rib fan, are you? Here's a little secret for y'all. Many years ago, I was a floor manager for McDonald's and I worked in three, I've worked in three different branches. The most notable of which? Was Liverpool Street Station in London. I also worked in Chelmsford, which is how I know Chelmsford quite well because I used to live in Southwood and Ferris, but I worked in the McDonald's branch in Chelmsford. And I worked in Chesham, in Buckinghamshire, where I lived with my ex-husband. And it was when I was in Chesham that I became a floor manager. Uh, I worked there probably until I was about, well, I got married when I was 22. And that was... I was married when I was working there, so I think I stopped working there when I was about 23, 24, something like that. But I had my first job in McDonald's just as a, it was, I was just counter staff. Excuse me, when I was, uh, when I was 18 at Chelmsford. Of course, it's very different now. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the workings of inside a McDonald's is very different. I worked in a wimpy restaurant when I was a teenager. We don't, they don't really exist anymore either. No, they don't. Um... I don't think I can't remember last time I. I think it's a Wimpy in. No, that's a Wendy's. There's a Wendy's in Sheffield, not a Wimpy. I can't remember last time I saw a Wimpy. But Wimpies were very often copied by like local small scale sort of takeaways. Um, when I lived in Chesham, there was a couple that that tried to be like Wimpy. Was that on the high street? Yes, it was, Sharon. You uh, and you came out, and if you turned to the left, there was a McColl's news agent on the corner, and then just a little bit further on was a British Home Stores. I never really turned right when I came out because my ex partner would always pick me up at the British Home Stores from work or I'd go around that way to get a bus. Maybe what you can remember from all those years, yeah? Yep. Sorry, I'm making you sound old there. Oh, I can remember many things. I could probably, you know, still make a, a, a Big Mac if I put my mind to it. The only thing I didn't do I never did the children's parties. Never. Why was that? Because at that point, if you'd have met me, you would have looked at me and said, there is no way on God's green earth that that woman will ever have children. Because I was not maternal, not at all. Well, what changed then? Because something did. I don't know. 
I don't know. Even my mum didn't think I were ever going to have kids. There we go. Oh, apparently there's a wimpy in Retford. Is there? Yep. Whereabouts in Retford? Uh, Alice tells us so. Whereabouts is it in Retford, Alice? Probably in town centre somewhere, I would have thought. Yeah, I would have thought so. The only place I know in Retford is Weatherspoons. <laughs> and Morrison's. <clears throat> Yeah, but I worked in Liverpool Street Station in London because the, the chap I lived with when I was living in South Woodham, he worked in London and it was actually easier, believe it or not, and cheaper for me to go into London with him and get a tube ticket than it was to go to Chelmsford on the bus from South Woodham. You know, to go somewhere like 10 mile away, to go in somewhere 30 mile away, you'd expect that the 10 mile place would be cheaper, but no. There it is. Spa Lane in Retford, Andy. Right, okay. Um, I'll have to... You have to look that one up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I ended up at one, because I was doing the floor manager, I had to do an exam. You have to do an exam to be a floor, or you did have to do an exam to be a floor manager in McDonald's, and you had to go to the Finchley headquarters, uh, and you had to do, like, food safety and, you know, uh, you know how to run the shift and, you know, this, that, and other. And um, it was... Um, in the main headquarters in Finchley, they actually call it, believe it or not, they call it Hamburger University. So, the only ones I see now in service stations, so not the service restaurants like the one I worked in, it was fun making Knickerbocker Glories and Brown Derby Donuts. <laughs> Oh dear, yep, them were the days. But, you know, everything's changed, hasn't it, though, now? You know, things like even even restaurants like, like McDonald's have, have changed enormously the last few years. You know, the Happy Meal toys are now sustainable. They're not made of plastic. Uh, you know, you generally speaking, get something like a book or something, you know, like that. But I saw, um, it was quite funny, actually. It was pointed out that in the early 90s, we were all encouraged to use plastic to save the rainforest because we were running out of trees. And now we're all being encouraged to use paper to save the oceans because the oceans are full of plastic. You know, how times have changed in 30 years, eh? Was that right? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, there was a big campaign about saving the rainforest and reusing stuff and using both sides of your paper and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But now it's a case of, okay, use more paper. Use single-use stuff and recycle it. But don't forget as well, back then, recycling, a lot of recycling, like, paper and card and stuff wasn't a thing it all got sent to landfill well, it did, yeah. yes there is a bit of a difference now yep when you think about it it's 2023 mm -hmm. 1980 was like 43 years ago so you know the year I was born was very nearly 49 years ago. Or the day I was born, should I say. I've made myself feel old saying that, you know. Uh-huh. Considering I was born in 84. Yeah. The year of Wham's last Christmas. 
Yes, you're out of Armageddon this year. I am. Please you tell know, me you guys know what Armageddon is. 1984 was an absolutely fantastic year for music. It was billed as, you know, one of the best years ever for music. And I can see it. I can see why. Um, hang on a minute. Generally speaking, the best year for music, people say, is 77. Is it not? No, 84. Mrs. Miggins says you're a young duckling. He's my toy boy, Mrs. Miggins. Yeah, I'm, I'm not as young as I was, to be honest. I'm, I'm, uh, You'll always be catching up to me, though. I'm well aware. I mean, I'm in my last year of my 30s. Yes, big birthday for you next year. Even bigger one for you the year after. Yeah. Yes, in 2025, I shall reach a whole half century. God, that sounds awful, doesn't it? That sounds mad. Half century. Half, I still feel like I'm only 18 upstairs, though. You know. If you reach a half century, Nikia can raise your bat in front of the pavilion. <laughs> Cricket joke for the Americans, that one. I miss quite a lot of stuff, actually, about, like, the 80s and the 90s. You know, when I was sort of, you know, a teenager stroke young adult. There's a lot of stuff, you know, that that isn't, you know, it's no longer there. What have I done here? Oh, nothing. It's all right. It's just me. Yes, Sir Alice Banded was 84. Yeah. Uh, oh, speaking of that, did, you, did anyone else see the, the scathing sort of um, criticism that song got the other day? What did it get criticism for? Oh, it was something it was something really stupid about it being narrow-minded lyrics or something like that, which don't fit within today's sort of well, it probably doesn't fit within today's, but it was made in 1984. This is exactly what I thought when I read it. I thought, that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, it was a different time back then. Yeah, but you come know? on. I mean, some of the stuff that we watched on television back then doesn't align with today's values, well, does it? that's probably true. So, most of it doesn't align with it. Hmm. But I often find myself listening to a, an 80s playlist... Get a bit of Duran Duran and some Nick Kershaw and uh, where else? Some Eurythmics. I see. With me being born in 84, I was raised on 90s stuff. I was around in the Britpop era. Yes, Alex says that um, Band-Aid kept one off the top spot. Surely <laughs> did. I wonder whether it would these days. I don't know. Well, they've had a couple of reincarnations of Band-Aid. I don't think they've been terribly successful, though, have they? I think, I mean, Stock Aitken and Waterman did one, didn't they? Which had, like, Cliff Richard and stuff in it. Me too, Nicola, just turned 57. Don't know where those, those years have went. No, me neither. Angela, hello. I'm finally here after January 1st. My church meetings will be in the morning, so I'll be able to be more active in the streaming. Fantastic. Right to yeah, you come and join us whenever you can. Bring yourself to our meetings. Yeah, bring yourself, bring your stitch in, bring a brew. Don't even need the brew. <laughs> Gotta have a brew. It 
Americans don't drink tea, though, do they? I don't know if this lady's American. It doesn't tell me that. Ah, first concert. Sharon? Oh, Sandy mentions Depeche Mode. Definitely. I, I like Depeche Mode. Uh, Sharon's first concert was Duran Duran. Sharon, the other Sharon was the House Martins. Oh, a bit of early Norman Cook, Andy. Uh, yeah, otherwise known as Fat Boy Slim. Yep. My first concert was 1991, I think. Pretty sure it was 91. At Sheffield Arena, and it was Def Leppard. And I've had a lifelong uh, passion for them ever since. Seen them uh, five times. Uh, yeah, it's, four, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's five. Four, five. It, it was it's five because because yeah. I can't remember the, the the exact dates like you like you do, but mm -hmm. I know for a fact that when I took you the other the other year in Newcastle, that was the fifth time. Yeah, so it is five. Closely followed by Brian Adams, who I've seen three times. Yes. Once in London at the Root of Kings in 1999. Once in about, well, I was pregnant with Lauren, so that would have been 2008 Eight. or nine, because she was born in 2009. I can't remember roughly what time of year it was. And then once with you a few years ago. Yes, so I organised that one, didn't I? Yeah, I love Brian Adams. Love Def Leppard. My first concert was Pavarotti, the opera tenor. Oh, Pavarotti. Only person that can uh, make you, well, <laughs> made, made a few people cry with his rendition of Ness and Dorma. No man is an island. True. Unless you're Pavarotti floating on his back in a swimming pool. Terrible dad joke there, Andy. <laughs> that's, that's actually <laughs> Nick from Jasper Carrot. So, All right, you know. okay. <laughs> Mrs. Miggins, I think I must be older than the rest of you ladies. Best time, musical time was with Queen, David Essex, David Cassidy, Mark Boland, Sweet, etc., etc. Do you know what? There's no wrong with that, Mrs. Miggins, because I love all of them as well. Uh, Queen, David Bowie, um, uh, T-Rex, Sweet, um, Mott the Hoople. Uh, oh, geez. Oh, God, who else can I think of? There's so many. And then the, we had, after the sort of the 70s music there that you're speaking of, Mrs. Miggins, we had like the era of disco when we had things like um, uh, Donna Summer, uh, Chic, Boney M. God, Boney M, weren't they a band, eh? Um, who else was disco, Andy? In the 80s. Oh, Diana Ross did some disco, didn't she? Um... In the early 90s. No, I, I didn't. I, I did. I don't. I didn't start. Start. Hello, uh, Joe. I didn't start any sort of musical education until '95. <laughs> My first concert was Def Leppard at Don Valley '93. So, mine was the one before. It was the Adrenalized tour, Alice. And it was when they introduced Vivian Campbell, who is still, 30 years later, referred to as the new one. <laughs> and we've been, uh, I don't know if uh, you know that Steve Clark's buried up in Wisewood at Sheffield. We've been to his grave. Uh, Alice knows that because yeah. we, uh, I, we, um, we uh, mentioned that at some point on my channel. And yeah. Alice, Alice actually went to find him, didn't you? Um, did you find him, Alice? Yeah, I've got pictures. Oh, I did? All oh, right, oh, okay. On my, on my, yeah. Well, you don't tell me none of this, do you? I did tell you at the time. Well, you don't, do you? Uh, that grave will actually be featured in the Bradfield episode when I eventually do, oh, right, okay. when I eventually do it. Um, Mrs. First concert with her dad in 1989. She was 10 and saw Tom Jones. Fantastic. It's not unusual. I also like I like seventies music, but I'm a little older, I think. 
I, I'm very eclectic. I, I mean, I was brought up with sort of seventies music and the, you know Motown and the disco and you know soul music and all the rest of it because my dad was really really eclectic with his his musical taste. So I would literally listen to anything, you know, from Elvis to Elton John. It didn't matter. Let's let's set these ladies a challenge. Oh, let's, all right. let's let's see if you can guess who my all time favorite band is. My all time. Oh yeah. Band. I will now, give you a clue. They come from America. They are an American band. They had four members. They now only have three. I say have three. They've actually stopped playing now. They have 15 studio albums and a whole heap of other stuff, um, which most of which I've got. Um, and their, their name consists basically of three letters, but it stands for something. Bonus points if you can get what it stands for. So there you go. Andy's thrown down that gauntlet of a challenge. How rude. My live stream. Let's <laughs> see if they can get who it is. Sad to say, I've never been to a live concert. I love all types of music except classical. And the handsome Rod Stewart, yeah. <sighs> I always, I, I, you know, the, I, I don't think there was anybody, anybody really I particularly dislike. Ah, you see, Andy, they, everybody wants to know if you get a gecko rouge kit if they win. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> so. <laughs> no is the answer. So Sandy says ELO. Uh, Heather P says REM and Angela says CCR. Well, one of those is right. Yep. Yep, I found him. Alice says, went on a Saturday afternoon. Not a great time to travel across Sheffield, especially if there's a match on it. Eh? Correct. Uh, yeah, I was never fussed on concerts and I'm keen on crowds. Do you know who CCR are? Uh, Creedence Clearwater River. Right. Okay, just checking. Hi, Gail. Bad moon rising. Uh, right. First was the Rolling Stones in 81. No wrong with a bit of Rolling Stones. Holy moly. <laughs> I do wonder what kind of world we're leaving for Keith Richards, though. <laughs> ELO, REM. <clears throat> so. Yeah. ELO, they're... Um... Bounsley's finest, aren't they? E yellow. Oh my god, that's an even worse dad <laughs> joke. Yes, if you said REM, you are absolutely spot on. Yeah, and is an REM fan. Massive REM fan. I've been for years and years and years. How many times have you seen them in concert? Once. Strange. Just the once? Yeah, just once, yeah. Only the once. Shocking. Well, they, well, I mean, they, they didn't come over here all that often. And you know, the first opportunity I kind of got to, to, see, to see him was when they just released the, uh, um, the, the the sort of greatest hits thing in 2003. Yeah. Um, so, you know. My dad had an REM song at his funeral. It was either that or some ACDC. And he wanted, to, he wanted You Shook Me All Night Long as he was coming, as they were playing him, him out of the church, you know, uh, as they were going to carry him out of the church. But you know, he was he was overruled because you know you shook me all night long is not entirely appropriate. I think the vicar might have had a heart attack. You know why, right? Uh, yes, Lord. Yeah. My dad had a sense of humour like that. So we made sure that when we got to his wake, it was the first song on. My first concert was Tommy Steele. My grandma took me for the 18th, but I think it was far more for her than you. <laughs> I don't even know who Tommy Steele is, slash was. Should I know? Yeah, singer. I could have, uh, you could have guessed that one. I could have you? guessed that one, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mrs. Miggins not fond of crowds. Ten is usually the most, except for the Essex Needles retreat.
Oh. Well, if I finish a stitch before starting a new one, wouldn't it? Nine. I know, time's flying, isn't it? Time's flying when you're having fun. Yep. I'm going to get to the end of this little run of... <laughs> Mrs. Miggins' dad had always look on the bright side of life. Did it. Did it. Did Seeing Pavarotti, even though it was at the end of his career, was a highlight of my life. Being a senior senior, my music preference was Elvis Tom Jones and Elbe, El, El, bleh, 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 bleh. Engelbert Humperdinck. Blimey. You know what? I, normally I'd have watched any one of them. Oh, Steppenwolf, they were a band. Uh, that's... Um... Oh. So what, what's, what? The song that they are most famous for is yeah. Born to That's Be Well. Right. I always get them mixed up with... Um, Terrible singing voice. Oh, I always get them mixed up with... Um, what's the other band? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, there's another band I get them confused with, but I can't think who it is. <laughs> G&B. Hello from It'll Missouri. Hello. Welcome to the stream. There's another ACDC song that would have given the vicar a heart attack too, says Alice. Yeah. <laughs> I think they all, it's probably the old ones. Uh, yeah, I think most of them would. <laughs> yeah. I take it you saw that ACDC's original drummer died the other day. Yeah. Colin Burgess. Where's the kitty, Lauren and Hannah? So the kitty is sleeping off her tea, uh, ready to come down for her supper. Uh, Hannah is upstairs um, doing a diamond painting and Lauren is also upstairs and she is uh, on the phone to her friend. So, yeah, they've abandoned me. But Lauren might be watching the chat, I don't know. That's right, you've got me. Hi Esther, how are you? Hope you're doing okay. Wasn't my first concert, but I saw Morrissey once. It was a good show. I enjoyed listening to Morrissey the Smiths. Heather. Yeah. Did he have his gladiola? I was just swinging him around his head and lobbing him into the crowd like he usually does. <laughs> Bit of good fun, really, with Morrissey doing that. I had his thing for the gladiola, swinging him around his head. Marcy always seem very depressed. Yeah, a persona, isn't it? Elvis is your all-time favourite, right? I remember that, Mrs. Miggins. God, we've had a right good old reminisce, haven't we? Yeah, we seem to have gone back a few years this, this week, haven't we? Yeah, it's good, though. Uh, but all, all subjects and that that we, uh, we all enjoy. Music and McDonald's <laughs> and Twinkies. Vivian Campbell's been very poorly. Yes, he has. He's had cancer. Um, and Sav's constantly had, he's had Bell's palsy for a number of years as well. Um, it no, it's Hannah. Oh, Hannah. Ah, people are asking about you, Hannah. I gave you a shake. No, you don't say that word on my stream, thank you. I give you a bag. A cat. Hold on. <laughs> Where is she? Say hi. There's a kitty cat. 
There you go, you get to see a paw. <laughs> the look on this cat's face right now is Oh, she's not, not impressed. Exactly. We are one confused She's not cat. told on my birthday card. I've just been telling uh, people that you've been do you're busy doing a diamond painting, so if it's finished, we can show it in my I can show it in my flush tube next week if you like. What filming it tomorrow? No, next week. Say, you film flush tube on Monday. Yeah, but it won't be finished tomorrow, will it, Hannah? Not quite, no. I'm not even like mm. quarter away from it yet. Hannah had uh, a couple of little Christmas ornaments that we bought when we were in Nottingham. And she's quite enjoyed diamond painting those. So, Clara says hi. Hello. All right, she says. <laughs> Happy Yorkshire bird. That's a few words, my kid. It's busy feeding a hungry kitty. <coughs> yes, a cat who likes to be fed like more often than not, four times a day. Yeah, she likes her meals little and often, doesn't she? And it gets quite um, demanding. <laughs> Oh, you've got thunderstruck in your head now. I have now, because you've been talking about ACDC. Any of you ladies want to have a uh, uh, another live stream tomorrow night, then obviously come and join us. Oh, again. yeah, Andy's doing a live stream on his channel come tomorrow. For mine. Um, it's the last one I'm doing of the year tomorrow on mine. Uh, and it's kind mm -hmm. of like a, almost like a Christmas party-ish type thing. Yeah, we're going to have a Christmas party. Well, <laughs> yeah, I suppose you can call it a Christmas party. I don't, I don't know whether you do. Yeah, it'll just be the same as normal. It'll just be us talking like we, like we do. Mm -hmm. stuff, but, you know. Yes, I should be joining that stream tomorrow. Yeah. It's not going to be a party. There's not going to be like crackers or anything like that. Well, we've got our tree up. Yeah, we've got the tree up, so... Um, you'll be able to see that tomorrow because obviously Nikki, Nikki focuses her camera on a stitch, in which is fair enough. But of course, mine will face the tree. The same direction it always does. Oh. I've quite enjoyed tonight's stream. <clears throat> Fun subjects. Oh, the cat's having a bit of a meow now. I think she's hungry. Are you having cat problems? Ah, oh, the kitty cat's hungry. Cat wants food. Feed her. Love how your streams find their own natural rhythm. Yep. And if you've got a problem with your rhythm, there's probably a medicine for that. Have <laughs> 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 our humour too. My cat's sleeping on top of the fish tank. He's been there all evening. Oh. Aww. It's a very strange place to sleep. Presumably he's in, on a cover on the top of the fish tank and not sort of floating around in the top trying to catch a snack as he sleeps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cat goes under your bed, doesn't she, all the time? Is it the Australian tree? No, Alice, Alice, we've got rid of the Australian one for now. And, yeah, we have an actual tree. Yeah, now. we've got the actual one out. <laughs> what was the Australian one again? Fan. Fan. The fan. It's uh, in a conservatory. 
Call it the Australian Christmas tree because in Australia it's very hot at the moment. Yes. Yeah. And they also had they've also had a couple of tropical um uh Storms. tropical cyclones and Storms. other bits of weather that have come in and created a heat wave and then they've had, had like hailstones like you know bigger than the size of a Malteser kind of thing, you know, big hailstones and what because I was watching Darren's frost tube the other day and he was it showed a video of uh, the hailstones and they were enormous. Uh, definitely on the aquarium lid, he's fallen in there once. <laughs> uh, the Australian tree is, uh, I've got a pedestal fan, uh, Mrs. Miggins, that just keeps Andy cool in the summer, but it just sort of gets left in the corner of the living room until we get to Christmas and then it gets shifted out for the tree. So, but in Australia, because you know, there's no uh, tree to go. And it come from a, a meme that I had on uh, Facebook. And it was like one of these pedestal fans with just a few presents chucked at the bottom of it. And the caption was Australian Christmas tree, <laughs> which is very fitting. It was quite funny. I've got the Christmas card up. Oh, have you? Oh, lovely. My first and only Christmas card. Lovely. People don't send them though much these days, do they? I don't get them anymore. It's because of saving paper thing, isn't it? Right. And I'm lucky that I got a Christmas card with paper in it. Yep. Well, look at you. <laughs> Christmas cards with fivers and birthday cards and money. Do you know? You're lucky, don't you, Anna? We're coming to you for a loan. <laughs> That's all right. Then you can come. You can come to us for bus fare and all that. Though, can't you? Ah, she can. You think you've got problems? Mm. Have you seen the price of fuel? <laughs> oh, do you know better? Right, so we are at almost at that hour and a half. And I've just come to a nice point there where I can stop. 200. Oh, the reason I'm doing it uh, is because I'm realizing I made a mistake. 260 stitches. And we're now up to almost 18% on this piece, which will be nice. Let me just move the camera back. Look at that. I love the colours in this. They're absolutely fantastic. And that lady's come in now properly and chair back and what have you. And I can see through the camera, but not necessarily when I'm looking at it, that she's got a hat on. So, yeah, doing well. But I just love the colours in this. Aren't they just amazing? Real nice, bright. But yeah, heading towards this lady next who's got something on her knee. And we'll get that sorted. So, again, we've had a lovely, lovely lot of you in here. I've seen over 40. Um, if you won't be joining me next week, do have a wonderful Christmas um, and hopefully we'll see you in the new year. I absolutely understand get that not all of you will be able to join us over the festive season um, and I expect you know that people will be busy and these live streams won't be as busy and that's fine. You know, priority is your family, your health, your happiness, your family, uh, take care of your nearest and dearest and have an absolutely fantastic uh, festive season. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to leave you with that. Frost Tube Tuesday, as usual, stick two stitches with me this week. Live next week if you can make it. But if not, do take real good care and have a wonderful, wonderful uh, couple of weeks. And I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Oh, Hannah. Hmm.